So let's get started and try make a riff for our little bass line here. Now, if you have no background or history in music theory, don't worry, you don't really need one. But obviously it's a great advantage if you do. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly skip through some of the kind of terminology we'll use with music and notes and the differences between them. I'm going to double click here to make a new MIDI clip in our organ track. And you can see this piano editor has opened up down here. I'm going to click and drag here just to expand it so we can see what we're doing a little more clearly. And in the area to the left here, I'm going to click and drag to the right just to zoom in a little. Now, as I press this key on my keyboard, which is kind of the range I want my riff to be in, I'm going to click here and drag up and down and see where it's hitting it. So you can see C3 is lighting up as I hit that note. So what is C? A piano keyboard has 88 keys on it. And roughly in the middle of the piano keyboard is this key called middle C, which is where I'm hitting here, C3. So there's nothing specifically extra important about that. You could start a riff in any key that you want, but it helps to kind of write and master one key and get used to it, I suppose, just so you're at home with that. And then you can use that transpose function that we saw earlier in either let's double click here on the track to go to our simpler and uh, we can see the transpose here i'm hitting it in c now this is effectively d when i go up to go up to four that's e so you don't actually need to be a maestro on all the scales to write in all the keys so this is c if we go up it's d up one white key up another white key, it's E, F, G, and A. So A being kind of where you start in the alphabet, you can kind of use that as your marker because you'll know that the next key up is gonna be B. But then you go back to C again. Now you'll notice on the keyboard, everything kind of goes in these loops of eight almost. You've got the same keys and the same patterns that repeat all the way up the keyboard. Although it might make sense to start with A. C is the kind of easiest key that everybody usually starts in. So I'm going to do this whole riff in C. Now you'll notice we didn't count the black keys there. That's because the black keys in a piano, they don't really have their own names specifically. They're seen as either high or low versions of the white keys closest to them. So here we have C. Up one from that is called C sharp. Now, Sharp in musical terms means a little bit higher and flat in musical terms means a little bit lower. So that could also be called D flat. So we've got our D here, E. So this could be E flat or D sharp. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then back to C. Just give me a quick gloss over what the notes are called just so you know them when when we're loading in some of the MIDI effects and things later so right let's write this in C now the hard and fast rules for what kind of notes to play in a particular scale generally in dance music we stick to minor chords a lot just because they kind of sound a bit cooler major chords tend to just be very very happy so in minor chords you've got different distances between the notes which are called intervals. So the distance between two notes is called an interval. So if we have a C and then we play a G, that's called a fifth. Because there are one, two, three, four, five white keys. So if we go one, two, three keys, that's called a third. And that's a major third. Major is the happier chords, minor are the kind of sadder or more serious chords. So if we were to make this a minor chord, let's see, C, and we play our third here, we bring it down. You always go flatter to make your minor third. So just by sticking to those kind of rules, we can make our, our riffs a little bit kind of cooler, a bit more edgy by keeping them in kind of minor scales. So I'm going to 
keep notes. So just check the notes that actually come with the course because I'm not going to go into them right here, right now. We're just going to make a simple riff right here, right now. Because you can always mess around and make your own riffs and pick this kind of stuff up as you go along. But I'm going to include some of my kind of hard and fast, quick rules for writing music in, in dance music style. Stuff that will work most of the time and will basically help you write musical riffs that write musical riffs to the best of your abilities that will sound good in a dance music genre. So let's have a listen to our drum tracks. I'm going to keep something a bit simpler actually. I'm just going to select all of these, move them down. And I'm going to copy this clip, paste it in here, rename this clip to simple and just make a simple beat. Let's see. Take all those closed hats out of it and just put some open hats in. I just like to have a simple drum beat to write to. Okay, so let's work out some bass riffs. So I'm going to record in something a little bit like this, just to keep it a bit kind of clubby and a bit edgy. So when you're recording a riff in, two ways you can do it. You can just write it by clicking on these notes here. Obviously that gives you kind of good control over where you're hitting things and you can be a lot more exact with it, but you kind of don't get to have as much fun with it, I suppose, and don't get that organic feel. So I'm going to record this in. Okay, so let's get ready to record our riff. I'm going to delete this blank clip we had up here and I'm going to go to our little metronome up here, drop it down and you'll see count it in. It's set to none. I'm going to set this to one bar and you'll see why in a minute. It gives us a chance once we start record to get a feel for the time and then we'll record after one bar of counting us in so that we can get ready to hit the riff as soon as it starts recording. Now I'm also going to give myself an additional helping hand with Ableton here by quantizing as I record. Now you remember that in our clip when we are clicking around with MIDI notes, I'll just refresh your memory here, if we had some notes that were a little bit off time. We can select them all and do command and U and that will quantize them or shift them into the exact spaces on the grid closest to them. And that makes our playing quite precise. But when you're recording in, your playing probably won't be that precise. So what quantizing does will help the notes that you record while you play instantly pop straight in. So I'm going to go up to edit, record quantization and do 16th note quantization. So last thing to check is make sure our track is armed and you can double check that just by hitting a note and you will hear it being played. If you want to click on IO, that will also help. Monitor being set to auto is also useful. So that means you'll hear what you're playing when you're recording. And once you stop recording, it'll just automatically play it. So we'll turn that off just to save some room. Now. I'm going to hit this little record button to record in this clip slot. And regardless of this record button up here, it will automatically start recording what I'm playing. Now, once I'm happy with my riff, I'm actually going to click the play button again, just to instantly stop recording and start playing. So let's just have a go and just 
get something in and we can always tweak it a little bit later. So listen for the count in. See the way I clicked up here just as I knew I was finished. You'll see my bottom note, the C, is missing off the screen here. A couple of things I could do in this scenario. Click here, drag up, so I can raise the whole view and see these bottom notes. I could have clicked here and dragged to the left to zoom out a little. Or I can also click Fold. What Fold does is it forgets about any of the notes on the piano keyboard on the left hand side here. And only includes the ones that I have written notes into in the view which is very handy if you have a complex riff going on and you really want to see it all on the screen at the same time for editing. So that's not a bad little riff, let's stick with that. So I'm just going to edit these notes a little. You can always edit what you recorded. And just put a double for this note. Maybe move it out to here and drag the end of this note by clicking and holding. I'll move this note out a little bit too. That's not too bad. Now don't forget, you can also do similarly the way we did with the uh, drum patterns. Let's click on this clip and click Command and D to duplicate it. And we can make a variation of it as well. Let's make a simpler variation. Let's call this our, our kind of chorus clip. And we'll just move the notes here. We won't actually record it. So let's play this clip so that we know we're editing the one that's playing. And I'm gonna rename it just to make it a little bit different. M1 simple. Right click and just make it a different color just for the sake of clarity. Let's try and keep our notes traveling a little less just to um, make it a bit simpler. So we'll mirror what happened here in the first two bars. There's no hard and fast rules for, you know, exactly what to do here. Just have a mess around, click with the notes and have a bit of fun with it. I don't like what I did there, so I'm just going to Command Z. Okay, important safety tip, always remember to save your set often. And if you've made some changes, maybe don't save over the same set that you had, save a new version of it. So I'm going to go File, Save Live Set As, or I could do Shift, Command and S, or Control, Shift, S. I'm going to do Save Live Set As. Now where I have this is on my desktop, sub base folder, and into the same project. And I'm going to save it as base lesson 2, or I could call it 2A, or whatever I want. And we've now got a nice version which kind of marks this in time, so we could always go back to base lesson 1 if we decided we had gone too far, maybe our old version sounded better. And it does happen often. You might have a late night session, think what you did sounds great and then next day you'll listen to it in the morning and you'll just be wondering what have I done you'll always have that previous version to go back to so now we've got our simple bass riff we'll move on next to layering a sound with a third-party VST instrument go, go. 